Hey, my name is Justin Beck. I'm an instructor here at 343 Labs in New York City. I work under the artist name Louis Beck and I produce in all sorts of different genres of music as well as working as a recording engineer, mixing engineer and mastering engineer. Today, I'm gonna teach you how to put together a lo-fi hip hop beat on the fly, teach you some of the tricks of the genre and some of the kind of tropes that are expected when you're trying to make this style of music. So what I've got here is a little loop that I've thrown together. And as you can see, it's not too complicated. And so if we just go ahead and listen to it first, you'll kind of see what there is. So, you know, it's like that nice dreamy, a little bit out there kind of vibe. And what I'm gonna do now is show you how I got from start to finish with this beat and kind of reverse engineer it for you a little bit. So the main thing with hip hop and lo-fi hip hop especially, you know, is you wanna find a cool sample to be able to use and loop. So what I did was, is I sampled a Brazilian song, a kind of like so jazz samba type of vibe. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off all this processing and show you what this loop sounds like raw. All right, so of course it took me, you know, a minute or two to go through the song and kind of find the part that I wanted to loop. And that's a really important part of this process, but you know, I'm gonna leave that out because that takes a little while. The key here though, is that I did warp it, right? So what we wanna make sure is that we take the loop and we have it completely falling in time, right? Cause we wanna make sure that our loop is conforming to our beat, really more than our beat is conforming to our loop, if that makes sense. What I mean by that simply is that we don't want to have to make a beat that relies on the quirky qualities of our loop, right? We want to tame the loop so that we can build around it in the cleanest way possible. So the very next thing that I did, right, is I'm going to filter out a lot of the low frequencies and high frequencies because all I really want is like the vibe of the loop. I don't actually want to uh, take all of that information because I'm going to build around that. I need, I need space for the rest of the stuff I'm going to do. So the first thing I do, is is throw on a low pass and high pass filter so band pass filter so immediately right we have this kind of spaced out dreamy vibe now the next thing i'm going to do is put some reverb on and this should kind of wash it out a little bit and give us that extra dreamy quality now after that one of the things that's very common with lo-fi hip-hop is bit crushing, you know? And part of the reason for that, who knows really, maybe it's like a chicken and egg type of situation, but just because the genre really started and evolved so much on the internet, there's a lot of low resolution sharing. that I think, you know, across time, the idea of having bit crushed qualities across the mix and the, and the production kind of adds that like definition to the genre. So I'm gonna throw on this bit crusher. Right? And it's actually a very light amount of downsampling and bit reduction, right? I'm only reducing to 11 bits and the downsampling is only to 1.3. So if we listen to, you know, what happens when I reduce more with the bits, I just start getting all this noise and that's not necessarily what I need. All I really want is that nice little golden kind of crackle sound on top. And then after that, I'm still going to filter it again, actually, because I don't want all of that. I just want the impression of that. So. So we can hear that in there, there's that little bit of haze now, right? So the next step I'm gonna do is I found some chords that work with the loop. This is the most important thing, right? So in lo-fi hip hop, there's a tendency towards using what we call extended chords. So if you find yourself sitting there in front of a keyboard and you're just you know, using minor and major chords, you're like, why can't I get this to sound all cool and chill like lo-fi hip hop? The secret to it is to add sevenths and ninths. So what I've done is, is I've taken two major seven chords and added the ninth. And so if we listen to those now, 
And the way that I did that, just in case you're wondering like, okay, I don't know ninth chords, I don't really know how to do that, is what you will really just wanna do is find the top note that you're hearing in the chord. So all I did was, and then I built the chord downward from there, right? So. Now, on the chords, I did use some bit reduction and bit crushing that was a little more obvious because that gives us that really nice kind of like warm, a little bit scratchy lo-fi tone, right? So if I turn that processing off, what we hear is this, which is a really nice milky tone, but I need that to be a little bit more messed up, so to speak, for the lo-fi vibe. So I turn on the bit crusher again, it immediately gives us that nice crunchiness. And if you listen closely, it also actually gives us a little bit of that uh, noise hits in the background. Now, part of the reason we want that is because that actually emulates tape saturation and, and tape noise. So when you're sampling vinyl a lot of the time, or sampling an old record, in addition to the crackle is some noise in the background that actually comes from the, the old school recording practices where they used to you know, record everything to tape. And tape over time builds up noise floors. So we want a little bit of that noise floor and we get that by reducing the bits. And then I added on a phaser just to wash it out even more. Right, to really give it that nice kind of deep vibe. So now if we combine that back with the loop. The next step I'm gonna do is something that's very common in this style is a little bit of just like a note glitch. And so I did that with this little piano stab here. Right, we hear that? And so what that does is, is it kind of just accentuates a certain part of the beat that I want, right? And so it's gonna give me a starting place to be able to figure out where to place my beat and kind of have my groove. So now if we come over here, right? There's still a little bit more that I could be doing to get this to be extra spacey and really like washed out, right? Because part of the lo-fi hip hop vibe and really just any kind of dreamy ambient music in general is to have everything be a little bit unclear, right? We don't want the listener to fully understand what they're hearing. We just want it to be a really nice, pleasant wash, right? And so what I did was I took another sample from the song, and this is just a little horn stab, right? So I'll take this off, just that, right? Which if you listen to it alone, you're like, why does that make any sense with this beat? But again, what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna roll off the lows and the highs, right? I'm gonna do a bandpass filter. And now what I did is I'm gonna send it all the way to my reverb send. So we hear, I get this nice little like pad almost, right? And so if we look at my reverb, what I did was I used a very long decay time, right? And the key for this is that almost we want the sound to create a pad with its tail. So when I blend that in now, we'll hear that I have this. And it gives it that nice kind of like dreamy uplifting vibe, right? The horn samples in general are really good if you want to just add an extra little layer of energy and like hypeness to your recording, right? So the very final step here before I put the beat back in is to add a little kind of like lead on top in some way, right? Something to just glue it all together. And so what I chose to do was use a kind of electric piano bell type of sound. And when I solo that, you'll hear that. All right. And so with that, you know, we want to keep it simple. The key to writing a good melody is to not overcomplicate it. All we're trying to do is create a very simple, evocative motif that kind of allows us to sink further into the music, right? So with this, all I wanted was something that was gonna be gentle and kind of happy again, and now we can just sit there and nod our head, right? So if we unsolo all that, and then add the beat back in, all right, we're starting, you can hear how I'm getting that melodic vibe. Now, there are a couple important things to keep in mind with the drums as well. A really great way to make your hip hop beats, especially your lo-fi hip hop beats, 
a little more dynamic is to not use the same clap for each clap. Now, I don't mean you have to use a different clap every time, but what I mean is, is that the clap that falls on the two and the clap that falls on the four as the second quarter note and the fourth quarter note can actually be a little bit different. So I use the same sample, right? A standard 808 clap. But what I did was, is on the first clap, I did some delay. So if we listen, right, I have that. And of course, all I did here was just use a very basic delay setting. Now I used low feedback, right? Because I don't want this to echo all over the place in the mix. All I really wanted to do is create a little bit of dynamic space. And then most importantly, my next clap is gonna be dry, right? So if we just solo that with the beat, with the kick, we'll hear this. Now, the reason this is kind of useful is because the clap with the delay almost like allows the beat to ride a little and then the, the dry clap brings it back in, All right? If it was just the dry clap every time, we'd kind of be nodding in the same place, but this allows us to be a little more flowy with it, right? And I also did a little subtle thing, right? Where the delay on the clap makes it spread out a little bit. So in order to make the other clap feel like it's part of the same like spatial area, right? Psychoacoustically, I use this spreading plugin from Sound Toys called MicroShift, which is a really useful chorus kind of effect. And I rolled back the mix a little bit. So now the other thing you'll probably notice is I also filtered out the high frequencies on this clap, right? So let's hear what it sounds like without the high frequencies gone. And then we'll hear what it sounds like with them. Right, still sounds pretty nice. But the thing here is that the tonal like synchronicity gets lost a little bit, right? Because the key with making lo-fi music is that we're actually taking away a lot of those high frequencies. The high frequencies are what actually, believe it or not, create the sense of detail. So if I put the auto filter back on now, well here, it makes more sense tonally with the rest of it, right? Now, the very last thing I did as well, with the hi-hats is I did a little bit of bit reduction and I put a phaser on them. And the thing about having the phaser on them is that I like to do these kind of subtle modulation processing on hi-hats, especially when they're samples, right? Because samples get very stiff and stale. And what low grade modulation will do is give it that kind of illusion that it's almost being played live and give it those imperfections that we actually like in music. So if we listen, with it off, right? It's just a very basic 909 closed hi-hat. And you'll see again, I used micro shift to put it wide in the stereo field, just a little bit. And then I throw the phaser on, right? You can hear those nice little kind of wah-wah artifacts that come on on top and then crush it a little bit with the bits, right? Just to give it that extra low fi vibe. So we listen to it all together now. So if you wanted a really quick, basic way, right, to put together an arrangement, you could just start out with only your dreamy section, right? And then everything comes in. Know, the next step maybe would be to add a bass line or find a cool like vocal sample of someone talking about something, these kinds of things, right? And just continue to create little melodic uh, flourishes, whether it's through finding other samples or writing your own little pieces. So those are the basics of putting together a lo-fi hip hop track. Again, I'm Justin Beck here at 343 Labs. We're a music production school in New York City and online. If you liked the video, click the subscribe link below. And if you're interested in taking classes, please visit our website.